Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to continue with our demonstrations of percussion sound effects. The first video was on the water phone, the next video was on bells and whistles, and today we're going to do a lot of things. We're going to do sleigh bells, horns, slapsticks, flexitones, ratchets, all kinds of things. So this will be a little bit of a longer video. So the first thing that I want to demonstrate today to you are the horns. This is a klaxon horn. This is a common instrument that as a percussionist you will have to play. All right. Um, these were used uh, back at the turn of the century on the first cars. All right. And they're used today basically as a sound effect. So I'll give you a demo of this one. Pretty impressive. So uh, these horns basically just have two dynamics, loud and louder. All right. Uh, if someone asks you to play it softly, just give them the thumbs up and do the same thing because there's no way to play it soft. If you try to play it soft, nothing barely comes out. OK, so you really have to squeeze that bulb. All right. To make it um, to make it come out. Now, if you want it softer, you can put your hand in there. But of course, it sounds kind of anemic. You can also try a sock. I've even covered it with a piece of plastic, okay, um, like a, the top of a margarine uh, bucket. So that, that works and tape it, but still it sounds anemic. So my suggestion if someone wants it softer is to play back like this rather than this, okay, or play it up over your shoulder. So those are the things. Uh, to remember about this. But normally you'll just play it full out. Now you'll see I have a mount on here. So I put a, some duct tape under the mount so it wouldn't collapse the brass. And the mount is important because you're going to have to play this a lot of times quickly while you're playing other things. You'll just have to reach over. So I definitely suggest the one you buy you can put a mount on there. And this is just a regular drum set mount. Uh, there's lots of kinds of these that could mount right on there. Usually uh, there's space for a rod here, and you just connect that to something else, and it's just suspended then, like that. All right? There's also a way to mount it like this, with this screw. That's a little more specialized. You'll have to buy a special mount for that. So I just recommend doing something like this. Now these bulbs wear, will wear out, and so I suggest oiling them from time to time. Uh, you can use LP lug lube or just a machine oil and lightly oil them and that way they'll last twice as long. Once they crack, it's only a matter of time before uh, they'll crack all the way through and then you, you can't use them. You can buy replacements. I like the kind that you, um, you screw on if you can get those. So whenever you buy your horn, see if you can get some replacement bulbs with it because they will wear out over time. This, this is a brand new bulb. Before this, I had a bulb on there for about 20 years. I oiled it, but even with that, one day it just cracked, okay? So, also you may want to get a small horn. This is a bicycle horn. Uh, I've used that a few times. And this is a straight horn. Uh, this is a pretty unique sound. Kind of sounds like uh, a wounded goose. But um, but some people prefer this over the klaxon horn. And I also can mount this with the same mount. All right? And it isn't as loud. That's the other thing. It just doesn't sound as good as this, which is just a classic sound. All right, so those are your horns. Next, we have sleigh bells. Now, you might say, sleigh bells? Who cares about those? Well, sleigh bells are not just for Christmas. We actually use them on all kinds of things. There's a classical repertoire that uses them, like Lieutenant Kiji uh, from Prokofiev uses them in the Troika. And you'll always use them, obviously, for Christmas for sleigh ride. Also, lots of Broadway shows use them as a color mechanism. In other words, kind of like a pretty sound that's played quietly uh, with something else. You know, maybe the hi-hat. And I've done that lots and lots of times. So sleigh bells are really common. You should have at least two sets that vary in brightness. So we'll show you that now. These are kind of the sleigh bells that you buy in a store. 
just as a decoration or sound effect. These are very dark and they're brass, but they sound great for rolls. So that's what I generally use those for. Then I've taken some of those and put uh, them on a large wooden dowel here, and these sound beautiful. Okay, they're great for rolls, they're super dark, and they're soft, they're not annoying, all right? Then, of course, we have the sleigh bells like this that you all have seen, all right? And so these are, these are some cheap ones, CB700, I believe. Uh, they're fine, though. They're not very loud. And finally, we have my favorite sleigh bells. I do not know what brand these are, but they're very old. Uh, so old that some of the bells have started to come off. I need to repair this. I've repaired several of them. They will come off if you have them long enough. So this sounds like this. Okay, now, there's some controversy of how to play these things. You can play them like this. Or, or even like this. But I play them like this. I feel like the bells speak faster. If I'm playing them like this, there's a slight, maybe 10 millisecond delay from when they speak. And you'll feel that. Also, it looks stupid, okay, if you're back there doing that, all right? So for me, this works really well. So I get immediate sound uh, doing that. Now, the only... Uh, thing that might go wrong is eventually, like I said, you might knock some of these bells off. You just fix it. But that's the way I play sleigh bells, okay? So these are my favorites, and, and they're also great for rolls. And you can even... You could even use two sets at once, play them like a shaker. So that's sleigh bells and horns. We'll be right back with some slapsticks. Next we have slapsticks, or better known as the whip. So uh, you've heard this before if you ever heard sleigh ride, the whip sound. They're used a lot. Um, percussionists have to play these. Luckily, they're really easy to build, so you can make your own, and I've made lots of my own, except these are not ones that I made, okay? Um, it's just basically a hinge, two pieces of wood, and some handles that you can shape. So I do a lot of woodworking, so I made this. This one has gotten some use. You see it's cracked there. Now, you can use different kinds of wood to get different kinds of sounds. This is just oak. All right, and you see that uh, there's a hole there, and that hole is to release air, all right? And you offset the holes. So if you look at that, you can see how the holes are offset. And, you know, don't get your fingers in there. You just use those handles, and, you know, it just sounds like this. Now, I have a small one. This is... Um, when I made, I was uh, doing a floor out of Brazilian walnut, which is also called ipe or ironwood. It's a super hard wood. And so I had a bunch left over. So I planed it and made this slapstick. I have a few of these and then just put some drawer knobs on there. Okay. Uh, this one is cracked after some use. The hardwoods will do that. Okay. And, but it still sounds fine. So that's a high pitched slapstick made out of probably one of the hardest woods in the world ironwood here's another oak one and this is a nicer one i made it pretty so you see the cabinet hinge on there nicer handles bigger holes 
I gotta put some oil in there because it's starting to squeak. And see, this is lower than this one. All right, then finally, here's a slapstick my buddy uh, Artie used to make, which is really nice. And this, I believe, is poplar. That's the wood. So that's another hardwood. You want to use hardwood, don't use pine. Uh, pine will warp and crack really easy. All right, so also you might want to get a one handed slapstick. In fact, you have to have it because sometimes you're playing and then you got to pick it up, play it and then go on to something else, or actually play at the same time that you're using the slapstick. So these are done with a whip motion. Some, I have two. So the timing on is tricky. This one is also uh, broken. This one I bought used like, like this, so not sure, sure how that happened. Okay, but they still sound fine even if they're cracked. But very useful. Now you have to start your hit a little early. Just think of it like a drag or a flam where you're starting a little early. So one, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so you're counting and you're coming in on the end so you're not late. That's common that people do that. Uh, we did a show of maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago with the symphony with a percussion ensemble piece that I wrote and I made probably four or five slapsticks of different sizes. I'll show you those now. Here's one. Okay, this is the gold slapstick. It's pretty big. <laughs> so this was a, a comedy thing that we did. And this thing is massive. I don't want to destroy my mic, so I'll play it like this. Now this thing sounds so cool. I've actually used it on recordings. Uh, to beef up a snare drum sound, all right? It's so big that it just blew all the dust from the studio. <laughs> it's probably floating right in front of the camera. All right, so, so it's, it's a very cool sound. Sounds like a super low hand clap. So I sampled this and used that. And I also made a big heavy one out of oak, and this thing weighs a ton. And very similar in sound, just a little bit, a little bit deeper and louder. So these are so easy to make. It's just kind of a piano hinge that I cut and did the holes and put some handles on there. It probably took me a half hour. Okay, nothing to it. So you can make your own if you're at home and bored. Get the kids involved. All right. So those are slapsticks. Again, you need uh, one medium-sized one like this two-handed and then a one-handed one will get you through pretty much 95% of anything you have to do. Next up we have flexitones, vibraslaps, and ratchets. So we'll start with the vibraslap. The vibraslap is a, um, an instrument that was created to copy the sound of a skull of a mule. It used to be called the jawbone of an ass, okay? And so when you'd hit it, the teeth would rattle. Of course, this, this is a skull. It's pretty horrible. Uh, and that was a sound effect. Then LP invented the vibra slap and uh, comes in different sizes. So we wouldn't have to go around, you know, hunting for, for mule skulls. All right. So I brought three today. One I brought because it's broken. And I wanted to show you what happens to these things when they break. They do break. It's one of the most fragile of the percussion instruments, okay? There's a lot of moving parts, and uh, there's wood involved and metal. Uh, there's also screws involved that can strip out. So this one, this was one of my first ones that I, I got. It's basically a Vibraslap 1. It was the original LP Vibraslap, and this probably doesn't have any sound left. A little bit, not too bad. But what's happened is this top part has come loose. And I tried to glue it, but the, the screw does not hold anymore. So it's basically stripped and cracked. I'll probably take it apart at some point and glue it really good and get it sounding good again. But I have some others, so right now I don't have the time to do that. So anyway, these will break. Now, as far as how you play it, 
There's two ways to play it, but you need to hold it like this so it rings after. Okay? To get short sounds, you can hit it here and muffle it. Or you can mount it with, um, there's, a, there's a mount, I don't know how to describe it, I, I couldn't find mine, but it's used to mount a go-go bells, and that works for this. It's not made for this, but it works for this. And you can mount it on a stand and play it with one hand and muffle the other. I've had to play parts with that, they're kind of ridiculous, but that's how you have to do it, okay? Because you have to mount it. You can hit it on this ball, that's what it's meant to be played at like, so. And as soon as you hit it, you let go so it rings the maximum amount of time. So you're basically hanging it on your finger. In a pinch, if you're just picking it up blind really fast, you can always hit the top of it. But I don't recommend that because it will end up breaking like this one. All right? So, but if you're in the dark and you're grabbing it, it's actually easy to miss this ball sometimes. You can barely see if you're in a dark pit. So if you want to be safe, you can't miss this. And here's the right way to play it. Which sounds better. So uh, that's the Vibraslap 2, okay? And this is the Vibraslap 2, but it's the small version. So I'll show you what this sounds like. Okay, if I hit the top of it, this particular small one sounds better if you hit the top. It rings longer. Okay, so. Probably because the, um, the tines inside here, they're smaller. So I'm activating it right at the point of contact. All right, so that's Vibraslap. You definitely need to have at least one of these. Better to have two, a small one and a large one. Good. Now the flexitone. So the flexitone is a takeoff on the musical saw. If you have ever seen those, I have one. I'm really not good at it, so I'm not going to play that for you. But what it is, it's a piece of metal with two strikers on either side that you bend to adjust the pitch of it. Now I have one flexitone. Here it is. No, where is it? There it is. So on this one, I purposely took off one of the strikers so I could play it like a musical saw. There was an orchestra piece I had to play a flexitone solo uh, several years back up front. It's really embarrassing. But, you know, if you play it with both tines on there or both strikers, it sounds like this. So not only do you run out of real estate because this thing gets in the way, the striker, but it also activates. So what I did is I just had an extra one, so I took off that um, extra striker and bent this one back. So I got this. but you'll be humming that all day. All right, so that's one way you can get a little portable musical saw if you have to play a flexitone melody. And I'm just using a drumstick. You can use a mallet or whatever you want. All right, so uh, it's good to have a small and a large flexitone. They do differ, and just like a lot of things, the old ones are better. This is a really old one. It's the first one I ever got. It's probably 40 years old. When I was a teenager, I got this, okay? And it sounds great. This one is newer, and the problem is, is that these uh, strikers bend easier, so. So you have to play it much harder, and therefore it's louder. This one you can play soft, so. So you can play it softer uh, because they're closer together. Also, I think the metal's a little bit different. It just has a, to me, I don't know if it's coming across on the um, video, it just has a nicer sound. 
So you want to uh, practice short flourishes or rolls and long ones. It's a hard instrument to play, and you always look stupid playing it. It's kind of the joke, you know, but uh, try not to move your face too much. Okay, so it's, it's normally used in funny, scary kind of uh, atmospheres. The water phone is way cooler. I'd recommend substituting that. Then we have the large one. Now this one, uh, to me, is not a really great um, instrument. It's pretty big, but I am going to get another one of these and remove the striker so I have an even bigger portable musical saw. But here's what this one sounds like. Part of the problem with the big one is it's so big that the strikers have to be longer, which makes it ultra clumsy. Okay, so that's that's a problem. So if you're just going to buy one, which you can, I would try to find an older, maybe you could find one on Reverb, an older Flexitone. All right, like that. You'll know it's older because it's pretty much rusted, which is fine. The newer ones are fine too. They're just a little less, um, they're a little less well made, I think. Okay, good. So that's Flexitones. Finally, in this segment, we'll do ratchets. So. Ratchets are really common. They're used all the time. Once again, there's two kinds of ratchets, okay? This is a Lafema ratchet from Europe. They make the giant Mahler ratchets, uh, incredible ratchets. So you can play it like this. You can just go all day with that, all right? I hooked uh, this little apparatus onto here. It didn't come like that. You see I duct tape it for security, but I drilled a hole in the handle and then put this dowel in there because sometimes I need to play it like this. And of course that's not possible just doing it with the handle, with this kind of ratchet. This is a great sounding ratchet, but you have to make that adjustment to it, okay? Now the standard ratchet is the Ludwig or LP, everybody makes them now. Originally uh, Ludwig made them. This is a great ratchet. This is a really old Ludwig, okay? I believe it's from the 1950s. That's what a friend of mine told me. I don't know, but it looks pretty dang old. Even the wing nut has a really cool shape. Can't beat those old, that old Ludwig hardware, okay? This is a, a really nice sounding ratchet. Okay? The new ratchets are not very good at all. They don't sound like this. They're cheaper, the parts are plastic, the wood's not as hard. Uh, if you can find an even older one, the wood was oak, okay, and those are super loud, and this was made of metal. So I did have one at one time, but I misplaced it. I'm still trying to find it. So uh, that thing is even louder than this. It also has a clamp where you can clamp to a stand, which is extremely useful. So again, you'll have to play it with one hand sometimes. Also practice your short strokes, so. There's a famous part in Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker, where uh, I've played that a million times, where it's a ratchet solo, so you're going. And the trick is, no matter what tempo the conductor takes, you got to play that exactly the same. And it's tricky. It goes with choreography that the dancers do on stage. All right. Um, so try to find yourself a good ratchet. If you go on Reverb, like I said, you might be able to find an older one. That's what I recommend finding. It will be expensive, but it's worth it. So that's the ratchet. Okay. So next uh, segment will be on uh, special effects percussion instruments. So that'll be a long one. I'll probably separate that into a separate video, but uh, a lot of cool stuff. So we'll see you then. Thanks.